Two titans of Wall Street, Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon sat down with Becky Quick in their first ever joint interview to talk about the dangers of short-term thinking and investing in companies and why companies should do away with quarterly guidance. When companies get where they're uh, sort of living by so-called making the numbers, uh, they do a lot of... Uh, things that really are counter to the long-term interests of the business. And, and I've never seen a company uh, whose performance has been improved by having some forecast out there by the CEO that we're going to earn X, because the, uh, it's, sending, it's not only sending the wrong message and delivering the wrong results to the, uh, to the company and to the country. And it can often put a company in a position where management, you know, from the CEO down, feels obligated to deliver earnings and therefore may do things that they wouldn't otherwise have done. So if you have a good board, you know, the board will say, if you have a great investment opportunity and you say it's going to cost me another couple hundred million dollars this quarter, you know, someone like Warren would say, absolutely do it. That's, that's good. That's future earnings. Don't, don't hurt your company because you're trying to meet a short-term thing. Joining us now to react, John Levin from Levin Capital Strategies and Dick Kovacevich, the former Wells Fargo chairman and CEO. Welcome to you both. John, you think this is a good idea? Uh, I don't. And I've been in public for a long time on this, and I actually came on. Great respect for Mr. Buffett, great respect for Mr. Diamond. When they say something, I think the balance is in their favor, and you should pay attention to it. But, but, I'm, looking, <laughs> but I'm looking for some corporate leaders who come out with the other side. Uh, and I generally believe that while the country does need more investment, and short-termism may be a problem, it can be handled by more transparency and more discussion by companies. If a company will explain what is going on and what will go on, investors are entitled to understand what is happening with their investment. The quarter is over. What is investors are entitled to understand all of the changes that may be occurring that may affect it. The management has the ability to make the investments that Mr. Diamond so is talking their about. Their argument is this is bad for, you know, th this encourages bad behavior. You're, you're saying getting rid of this would be bad for the public. Right. This, what I believe is the public is helped by avoiding information vacuums. It creates fear, it creates uncertainty, it provides a breeding ground for false rumors, okay. for destabilizing computer programs. And one other point here is you can't abandon technology. There are people who were taking, who were studying credit card developments. There are people who are studying the number of cars in parking lots. The investment business is fiercely competitive. People are entitled to understand what the management best judgment is about their future okay. based on their present plans. Dick Kovacevic, what do you say about this proposal? Do you agree that it, with uh, Buffett and Diamond it's a, it's a good idea? Or like John Levin here, do you think this is a dangerous idea? I completely agree with Jamie and Warren. Uh, I never did uh, quarterly guidance for one very simple reason. I didn't know what our earnings were going to be at the end of the quarter. There are just too many moving parts. And there is a real danger that uh, if there's issues within the quarter and there is guidance that's out there, that particularly people lower in the organization may not be as transparent of, of giving information up uh, to the uh, CEO and others. And you can get some nefarious uh, uh, behavior that is uh, dangerous, in my opinion. And I can, so let you me think just it give you one bad example. Corporate cultures, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it does, and 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 short termism, where you may not do something that uh, you should be doing for the long term in order to meet these these numbers. But this, let me just give you one example. Well, uh, uh, Wells Fargo has always been the largest mortgage originator in the country and had two, a $2 trillion servicing portfolio of mortgages. Uh, you have to mark that to market at the end of the quarter. The basis on which you use to mark the market is the last day of the month, the 10-year treasury. That's mm -hmm. the basis of how you mark this uh, portfolio. God doesn't know what the uh, 10 year is going to be at, now you got to do this three months ahead of time if you're getting guidance now, of what it is going to be, you know, three months from now. I mean, probably doesn't care because it'll all work and you can have hundreds of millions of dollars of difference just because of, of uh, that calculation. Now, over all okay. the quarters, it'll work itself out, but you cannot be accurate or if you try to be accurate, you will maybe not hedge or you'll hedge the wrong way. It, it is dangerous. It doesn't work. And I've never done it and would never do it. John? I have a great friend 
who tells me I'm all wrong on this issue, as well as these three leaders. But I would respond to the soundness of that point by saying investors don't need quarterly earnings guidance. What they need is guidance towards the variables that will have an impact on the earnings. So if the 10-year moves by X percent, what impact will it have on a mortgage portfolio of this size? Nobody knows all the variables that are going on. The question is, what are the key variables that will have what kind of directional effect? Dick? Well, well uh, if you go uh, through anyone's uh, uh, 10Ks now, there's, there are 300 pages of all the issues that could uh, impact the, uh, the profitability of the company. And, and in, in case, again, using this, this uh, example, I did, uh, we disclose that all the time, how the 10-year could impact, uh, uh, in fact, not only the, the mortgage portfolio, but all the long-term investments we have. And, you, and we, are, we give that sensitivity analysis to people. And I would bet you there aren't 1% of our investors who takes the time to read the 300 pages that are delivered well, each yeah. and every month By about the, way, the sensitivity. I, that's a whole other, a whole other the, yeah. the length of some of these documents. Mike, what would you I say? I would just say to really address points that have been made on both sides. One, clearly not every company is suitable for very explicit earnings guidance. Very large banks where the results are really a snapshot of a moment in time of a very complex balance sheet are different, in my view, from a mid-sized casual dining company mm. where you can kind of have an staples. idea. You have your budgeting. You know where your same store sales should track. You know what promotions you're going to do. You know your advertising spending. You can give people an idea. And the other point is, if you don't give guidance, analysts are still going to have published forecasts. Yes. Right. And if they're wildly wrong or dispersion is tremendous among them, um, are you okay as a CEO just allowing that dissonance out there or is it better to have the best informed party give a view on which way the numbers are going? I think the absence of quality information, quality delivered, will reduce volatility and help the public and leave less room for rumors, computer trading, and inside information. Because there actually, are people who know and will find out. You don't want to just defend giving earnings guidance, John. You would like companies to be able to talk more in general about their performance it's a, it's with a, all types of investors, right? To take, to take this great point. I, I'm in, I'm I in mean, favor of that. I, I, I think I'd be fine. I don't know what the chicken, I don't know what the beef herd's going to be in the chicken herd and how sensitive it would be for the restaurants, but I'd like some guidance. They know pretty well what are the broilers and what are the pigs. And I think it's helpful. To and, and, and by the way, the history, I think, I keep bringing this up. The reason we got to this point is it used to be that privately the company would go to the analysts and say, your numbers are too high, your numbers are too low. You go they to do. your biggest shareholder and say, hey, here's what we're looking at. And so selective disclosure was thought to be an issue. So this was a way to bring it out into the open. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.